Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Bidding closed this week for the expanded bid window 6 of South Africa's renewable procurement program. Turin Screamer joins me to discuss the response to the latest round and what it could mean. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. What is the background to the enlargement of bid window 6? Basically it's load shedding and you know the very intense load shedding that we've been through this year and the last couple of years but this year in particular has been particularly bad. And uh, the president on the 25th of July announced a number of interventions, one of which was the doubling of bid window 6, the allocation for that. So initially it was going to be a procurement round of 2,600 um, megawatts, and he announced that it would be 5,200 megawatts. In the end, it's been reduced to 4,200 megawatts because uh, the new ministerial determinations needed in line with the integrated resource plan need to be concurred with, with the regulator. There wasn't uh, enough time to secure that concurrence ahead of this uh, closing date for bidding, which was early October. So they basically decided, well, instead of we'll use the allocations under the existing um, uh, ministerial determinations, which had sufficient space for, for wind in terms of the allocation for wind, for 3,200 megawatts, a doubling of that, but there wasn't any additional allocation for solar PV, so it's been limited to 1,000 megawatt allocation for the bid window 6, so it's reduced the whole overall size of the window to 4,200, but basically it's to try and get more uh, energy capacity into the system quick, more quickly. What was the response to the bid window 6 tender? Well, there was, as we sa uh, said, it was to July that we announced the doubling. So people were preparing uh, for this bid window, but for a much smaller round. And uh, so the, the, there was a bit of nervousness about whether there'd be a full subscription and oversubscription, which is what you need. And uh, uh, there were 56 bids in the end. So I think that was a sigh of relief on that front, given how late things changed. But if you analyze it, uh, the, so it's 9,000. 600 megawatts in total that has been bid in, but most of that relates to 33 solar PV projects. And we know what I said earlier about the small allocation for solar PV of only 1,000 megawatts. So that's five times oversubscribed. But if you look at the wind, which is the bigger allocation, the 3,200 uh, megawatt allocation, that was only slightly oversubscribed, just over 4,000 megawatts bid into that. The good news is that it was oversubscribed. The bad news on the wind front is that it was only marginally oversubscribed. What could this mean for the outcome of this round? Well, hopefully it means that the solar PV uh, bids will be fairly competitive. Very large projects bid in, a number of 420 megawatt projects, which is much larger than the traditional. There used to be a cap on both wind and solar of, a, of uh, around 75 and then 100 megawatts. But obviously that's had to move and make way for the big reform in the embedded generation market, which initially allowed 400 megawatt projects to bid without a license. And now that cap is being eliminated entirely. So bigger projects, uh, a lot of solar projects in that system, fairly geographically dispersed, although nothing in Mpumalanga, which was interesting, because that's where there's grid capacity available, because grid, the grid is a major uh, restriction at the moment. Uh, so so the, I think what we can say is there should be a competitiveness around solar PV and it shows that there's a bit of a, there's definitely an imbalance in the existing integrated resource plan which is heavily weighted towards wind. But the solar market has moved on and has become highly more competitive and uh, I think we, we should be doing more solar than we are but unfortunately we're working within the framework of the RP which hasn't been updated and then added to the problem is the the, the, the sort of the ministerial determinations which weren't available to add uh, that additional capacity or allocation. And then on the wind side, I think we must be concerned. I think uh, the, the, the bids are probably going to be higher priced than what we've seen. You know, we've, we've become accustomed to prices reducing every time each bid window. The last bid window is around 47 cents per kilowatt hour across the wind and solar projects. And uh, I think for the first time we're going to see an uptick in some of the prices coming through. But we have to wait and see. We've got no visibility yet of the prices. Uh, and I think particularly the wind, you can see the constraint around the grid. Uh, you need to be in the western, the eastern and the northern Cape. By far the predominant 
is the Western Cape. You know, I think they received something like 23 of these 56 bids into the Western Cape. And I think that just reflects, and most of those are wind, that there's still some grid available there. Much lower allocations in places like, uh, or bids in places like Eastern and Northern Cape, which also have good wind resources. So you can see that grid restrictions coming through. So I think to respond to your question, I think the implication is for the first time, we're probably going to see an uptick in prices bid. We know the inflationary environment, the supply chain pressures uh, that have um, affected um, the whole world. And I think we're going to see that reflected when we, we get the preferred bid announcements. This also comes on the back of some difficulties in getting procurement going again. Yeah, <coughs> so we, it all started with delaying procurement for seven years when the state captured Eskom at the time decided they had sufficient capacity in the system and therefore decided they would not sign power purchase agreements that, that were procured in 2014 and that just stopped uh, a, the REAP, which was a, sort of a regular 1,000 to 2,000 megawatts that we were procuring under that program. And that we can see the upshot of that, which is this intense load shedding. If we had just covered the gap through regular procurement, um, you know, the Meridian Economics report shows clearly that in 2021, had we had just done two more rounds uh, prior to 2021, uh, we would have eliminated 96% of all load shedding last year. I don't know about this year because it's been far more intense, but that was the mo what some models show. So it's been very deleterious to South Africa, the stop start and the state captured response out of Eskom to RPPs. Uh, it's, it's so. I suppose uh, the, the, the restarting was always going to be difficult and then we restarted badly. I think we restarted with the risk mitigation program which was extremely badly designed and people <laughs> signal that really early on uh, and there was no give from the Department of Mineral Resources or the IPP office uh, and therefore, and that was, you know, the additional issues of the power ships and their environmental issues and the legal cases that arose around that. So, so that we've only seen three projects cross the line there. So that means 2,000 megawatts is really, there's a lacuna and we're only going to cover a couple of those, um, that capacity. And I think at the end of October, there's going to be interest to see whether the line in the sand is drawn or not um, and whether we move on from that. And then bid window five, I think it approached very much as business as usual in a very business unusual context. One, the disruption. So we had to rebuild our credibility and our bids had to be dusted off again. Then very aggressive bids by the actual bidders, the wind and solar, thinking that the world of declining prices were going to, was going to continue forever. As soon as the preferred bidders were announced, there was a big <laughs> change in the trajectory of pricing. Uh, very difficult on the supply chain front, very difficult to sustain, get the services you need to build at the prices that you bid at. So we're in a situation where only three wind projects, and those were the more expensive ones, have actually signed power purchase agreements. The other 22 of the 25 also have until the end of October, and I think the signal is we could see some casualties there. So we're in a, a difficult phase of trying to restart something that we broke, and we can see the teething problems. We hope they're just teething problems, but they've been difficult. It's been difficult. And at the same time, you know, the, the liberalization of the South African market means the REAP isn't the only game in town. Um, much more interest, as we can see, f uh, in the embedded generation market. Lots of projects going for registration through the National Ener Energy Regulator at the moment. Every mining company, every smelting company, just about every factory looking at this opportunity there's far fewer uh, hoops to jump through if you can get grid. So uh, I, I, I'm not sure it's maybe a combination of all these things, but definitely on the grid side, I think we, that is reflected in the, wind, the low wind bids for bid window six. But yes, we're in a difficult restart phase and we need to get back into a regular rhythm if we're going to close this gaping hole that's leading to load shedding. What does this mean for South Africa and the energy crisis? Well, I think <coughs> it means, well, with Bidwinder 5 struggling, r the risk mitigation so badly designed, I think many people think let's move on from that because it's really going to bake in really high expensive pr prices that we don't need for very long. Um, so we need to actually get into a, a rhythm, as I said, 
and uh, also with the bid window five, if there are casualties, maybe that's what we need to see. We need to have visibility of that. Let's not try and paper over the cracks. Let's have a, 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 f have a clear view of what this hole is that we have to fill. Making late announcements on doubling allocations is also not ideal. Uh, and th but the only good thing is that it's not the only le lever to a add new renewables capacity. There is the embedded generation market. There's a lot of new players coming into that. But it's bad. I mean, it's bad for South Africa in the sense that 2,000 megawatts of emergency um, wasn't, wasn't fulfilled. Most of the 2,600 megawatts of new renewables that we needed to get going might, might not have be closed. So in a situation where we've got energy shortage, we need to add as much as quickly as possible. And the REAP is still important to try and close that and get uh, utility scale projects onto, onto the grid. And now we've also seen a knock-on effect with the delay to the battery storage uh, tender, which should have come out already last week, and it hasn't. So we need to get into a much uh, s secure, visible, lack, these delays, there's a, there's a lack of credibility that's building. Every time we have a program, it's delayed, announcements are delayed, uh, bid submission dates are delayed. I think the IPP office is, uh, is, is a credible organisation, has done well for South Africa, and uh, has really hard-working and uh, people that are trying to get these projects moving but I think the environment is tricky but I think we need to you know do what we say and say what we do you know we need to say if this is what well, how much we're going to procure on this date and this is when we're going to announce the preferred dollars and this is when financial close date deadline is we need to stick to those more and more because if we don't and there's always these moving targets I think it's bad for the credibility of the program and it gives a false sense of security that new energy is going to be added in the time frames we're talking about, which is 18 to 24 months. And every time there's a delay, that 18 to 24 months gets pushed back and pushed back. So we're getting closer to the, you know, um, the 2025 and the 2026 type time frames, which is, is really, really not on in a crisis. We need to add this capacity as quickly as possible. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.